This is my take on sweet potato casserole. Unlike traditional American sweet potato casserole, we don't use marshmallows and we don't have leftovers because everyone finishes it before we can save it. Mm. It's amazing. So I have a question. Is it a side dish or a dessert? Oh my God. It's a main dish. It's a main? <laughs> All right. I'm gonna call it a side dish because I don't wanna wait until dessert. Mm. It's soft, but not too soft. Oh my God, the nuts on top, the crunch. Pistachios? Yes. So sweet, crunchy, creamy. And the salt and the sweet. I'm very happy. <laughs> I'll confess that the trick is not anything special. Instead, I use Murasaki Japanese sweet potatoes. You used to have to go to an Asian market like H Mart or Nanyan Nan Ranch to find these, but you can now find these at Trader Joe's or you can order them online. I'll leave some links in the description down below. Start by washing and peeling all of your potatoes. Nothing special here, but you need to make sure that when you cut them, they're all roughly the same size. The first thing we need to do is boil our potatoes or find some way to soften them. You could bake them, but I just felt boiling with very generously salted water was the easiest thing. Unless someone can tell me otherwise, I go into a cold pot of water because trying to put in three pounds of sweet potatoes into a boiling pot will cause burns and that's not a good look or feel. So cold pot of water with potatoes on the stove, bring it up to a boil and let it go for 10 to 15 minutes depending on the size of your potatoes. Bigger chunks means more time, smaller chunks, less time. Drain them very thoroughly. Let them sit in the sink or the colander for a couple extra minutes. Bring them back into the pot. Make sure that the stove is off and add some butter. Grab a big wooden spoon or a potato masher if you have one and your pot is not nonstick and mash it until it basically looks like rough mashed potatoes. Next, we need to make the custard for the sweet potato filling. Try and crack one egg with one hand and realize you're not that cool, so you crack a second egg into the bowl like normal. Instead of sugar, we're gonna use maple syrup and we need about three quarters of a cup of some sort of milk product. I use half, half and half and half 1% milk. You could use whole cream or all milk, up to you. We'll also need some spices for this. Most recipes don't include enough spice in my opinion. So two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice or cinnamon. I honestly just grabbed whatever I found in the cabinet first and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. If you're fancy, feel free to freshly grind some nutmeg. And if you're feeling spicy, I do recommend some cayenne pepper. Less than a teaspoon, but more than a pinch. Whisk it until it's combined and we need to start tempering our custard. Egg whites start cooking at 130 to 140 degrees. So to make sure we don't scramble our eggs with our hot mashed sweet potato, we'll add a scoop, then stir, add a scoop, and then stir until it's all combined. And it looks something kind of like this. It may take a little bit, but you're basically looking for a cake batter like consistency, maybe a little thicker than that. Go preheat your oven to 375. As for our crust, I do recommend checking your cabinet. You might have some leftover nuts from last year's Thanksgiving. I was gonna use these pecans, but then I suddenly realized, oh wait, they expired in 2020. So I used some raw pistachios instead. You can use any type of nut, although I think peanuts would be kind of weird. You just need something that you can cut up into very tiny shards of nut for a crispy, crunchy crust. Just remember that if you do use pre-salted nuts, don't add extra salt to your filling, otherwise it might be gross. You'll need about a cup and a half of some type of nut, one half cup of all-purpose flour, a half cup of brown sugar, and one third cup of butter. Ultimately, you were just trying to make a paste of nut, flour, sugar, and butter, so you could really interchange these ratios as long as it looks something like this that you can spread on top of the filling. Now you'll need some sort of casserole dish to cook this in. You could probably do it in a cast iron, but don't be dumb like Jags. Oh no, I totally forgot to butter it. Come here. Jags is dumb. Jags is dumb, totally forgot to grease it. Don't be like Jags. So get some oven safe casserole dish, Pyrex, nine by 13 cake pan, whatever you have, lightly butter it, add your filling to it. Nothing too crazy, we're taking all the preliminary stuff that we did and combining it all together into a nice sweet potato casserole. 
At this stage, you can get your hands dirty if you want, or you can use a fork or a spatula. The goal here is to try and get an even distribution of the topping across the dish. Once you're done, you're gonna take this and throw it in a 375 degree oven for 30 minutes. If you want to get a little extra brown on the top, I recommend setting the oven to 425 for the last 10 minutes, or you can bust out a flamethrower or a torch. If you have the time, I do recommend letting it rest for about 20 minutes, or you can dive right in. Up to you. Just don't blame me if you burn your mouth. Is it hot? <laughs> Super hot. My bad. <laughs> so I'll be honest. I don't know whether to classify this as a dessert or a side dish. So I normally serve it as a side dish, but you could probably put this with some ice cream and it'd probably be pretty legit. So that is my Japanese sweet potato casserole recipe. I've been doing this for the last like six years now because everyone just seems to like it. You can find Japanese sweet potato at Mitsua, H Mart, 99 Ranch Market, or any other Asian grocery store near you. Trader Joe's also has them and I will leave some links in the description down below if you want to try and order them online. If you enjoyed this video, hitting that like button or subscribing lets me know that I'm making content that is valuable to you. So if you care to share some love and join the party, I would appreciate that. And I will leave you with the final tip and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you'll make some. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.